What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for September 2018 and today I'm gonna tell you how to build the fastest, one sec, the fastest gaming PC possible. For now. Excellent! The Enermax Liquitec TR42 all-in-one liquid CPU cooler has a massive contact plate made just for Threadripper and is rated for 500 watts of heat dissipation. High-pressure PWM fans mount to rubber channels on the radiator to absorb vibration, and the sexy logo and edge lighting on the block is addressable for syncing with your motherboard. It comes with an RGB control box too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. So if you're not familiar with this series, every month at the beginning of the month I part out a couple PCs. I'm not actually going to build the systems today, so if you're interested in actual builds, check out my builds playlist. Here it is, featuring just recently my build of the month for last month, which I built and then tested. That's pretty much the MO, plan the builds in one video, build one of the systems in another video, test one of the builds later in the month. That's a process that I can't seem to stop doing. And if you want to take part in next month's builds video, then go ahead and check out the straw poll linked in the video's description for what PC builds you want to see in October. And then of course last month I did this multiple choice selection, which many people chose many multiple different things, but the top vote getter was a back to school build for schoolwork, right? But but actually for gaming. We also wanted the most epic Threader per 2 po build possible. I didn't do that this month, mainly because Threader per 2 kind of fizzled. People are not very interested in that. I'm gonna follow up with some more Threader per 2 content, but just not right now. And then uh, also pretty close to the top was AMD and $500 budget. So I've combined a few of those ideas into the first build for today. This actually is my February build, a sub $500 gaming PC, and uh, this was about 470 bucks at the time. Now it's down to about $420, so we have had some price drops, and I did a full how to build tutorial on this system, as well as a follow up with setting things up and testing it. So to that end, I have my $450 back to school gaming PC. It has some upgrades compared to that one I did at the beginning of the year. First off in that we're using a 2400G instead of a 2200G. So this is a four core eight thread CPU. It's got a bit better integrated Vega graphics than the 2200G. It costs a little bit more, but you can get it for about $155 right now. But bear in mind when you're looking at the total price for this build at 450 bucks, you could easily shave about 50 bucks off of that and make this a $400 build if you just go with the 2200G, um, which is four cores and four threads, still an APU, so it's still got graphics integrated, and you can get that for about 100 bucks. Um, here you'll get a little bit more lifespan out of the CPU side of this, but both of these are designed with the idea that in the future you will upgrade these to a system with a graphics card. These are going to use an APU, the integrated uh, CPU and GPU together on the same chip, but you can take a discrete graphics card, which you can buy for, you know, 200 to 500 ish dollars, drop in alongside that and give yourself a really big boost in gaming performance. And I've also done a test on upgrading this 500 build to a more like a $750 build. So check out that video too if you want to see some of the difference between the two. But if you're just getting into PC gaming and you've got a budget of $400 to $500, this is what I would recommend you build. And of course, this is a back to school build. So, you know, you can use it for school work and stuff too. That's that's what you explain. That's how you explain it to your parents. And you look, you say, look, mom and dad, this doesn't even have a graphics card. So it's not even like a gaming PC, right? Uh, truth is you can game just fine with this CPU at uh, 1920 by 1080. Most games, if you want to play Fortnite or anything like that, and it comes with a cooler too, the AMD Wraith Stealth, so that will get you by again for now. This system has lots of potential upgrades, and if you're interested in the difference between performance from a 2400G to a 2200G, uh, check out my APU testing video that I did earlier this year, where I ran some benchmark comparisons between the two. But apart from that core component, the CPU and GPU combo, we have a motherboard for about $80, we have an 8 gig memory kit for about $85, a 240 gig SSD for about $40, then a case for 60 and a power supply for about $30. So let's run down those and why I chose what I chose. I went micro ATX for this build because I like it as a form factor. It's a little bit bigger than mini ITX and you have the potential for a little bit more expansion because you're not limited to just a single PCI Express expansion slot. I chose this ASRock board, the B450M Pro 4, because with the previous generation, the B350 motherboards, uh, ASRock had some really good choices down in the budget range for $70 or $80. Actually has decent power delivery with some cooling on it, so you can get some overclocking out of this board. It's got two M.2 slots for um, upgrading your storage in the future if you want to go with the high-speed M.2 NVMe drive, one there and then one down in the bottom right. Only four SATA ports, so bear that in mind, but you're probably not going to be maxing this out with SATA drives. It has the requisite four memory slots so you can upgrade your memory in the future, which is very important. And then it even has 
has a couple RGB headers, both an addressable five volt as well as the standard 12 volt RGB header. So if you do want to customize your system in the future with some LEDs, I don't recommend doing that right off the bat because you don't get extra performance out of LEDs, but it does have the headers on there. So for $70, I think that's a nice set of features for a B450 board. For memory, I chose this Team 8 gig kit and uh, eight gigs is kind of on the low side for a system right now, but memory is one of the more expensive components still that you have to buy. Also, and I've uh, addressed this many times with Ryzen systems before, it's better to go with faster speed memory. So the DDR4 memory speed that you'll read is usually gonna be 2666, 3000, 3200, and it gets faster. I recommend 3000 or 3200 speed memory or faster with an eight gig kit. And then also double checking the motherboard that you've chosen to make sure that on the motherboard's memory compatibility list that the kit you've chosen has been tested with Ryzen so that you can plug in the XMP speeds and get it to run at that speed. I chose this kit in particular because it's $85. It's not specifically on the memory list for uh, the motherboard that I chose, but we do have some positive feedback, including one guy down here who just bought it within the past couple months who said, Gigabyte Gamer 3 motherboard and an AMD Ryzen 7 1700X CPU, 3200 speed with no problem. So we're trusting that guy um, that this memory is gonna work. And the Team uh, T-Force Vulcan kits have worked pretty well for me in the past too. And one of the biggest upgrades you can do to this system, although it would up the base price by a decent amount, is going with 16 gigs or a two by eight gig kit instead of the eight gig version. Either way, I would go with the two by eight gig or two by four gig kit. Uh, and remember, again, with four slots, you could add more memory in the future or get rid of the kit you already have and upgrade. Memory is a really simple thing to upgrade, but it's also a pretty key component for um, getting the most performance out of your Ryzen system. So more on that in my how to build videos. So check those out if you want a little bit more feedback. For the remaining three components, these are pretty swappable. You could easily uh, go with something different than what I have specifically chosen here. In particular for the storage, since I'm on PC Part Picker and they have a thing called a parametric filter, told it I want an SSD, I want a capacity range that's gonna give me a 240 gig or a 256 gig drive, and then I'm sorting them by price. And you can get 240 gig SSDs for 40 bucks which is pretty cheap right now. Again, here you might wanna double check, reality check, uh, if you have a brand that you like or one that you've seen reviews on. I've personally used the SanDisk SSD Plus for quite a few builds, so that's one that I uh, often will recommend to people. For a case, I chose the Fractal Design Focus G Mini, and here I was pretty much looking for a micro ATX case that was in the price range that would fit with this build, so about 50 to $60. You could spend a little bit more on a case if you want to, but this one is gonna give you a couple 120 millimeter fans built in, so you will have your airflow ticket care of and you can swap one to the back if you didn't like the all intake configuration. Fits full size ATX power supplies. It's a micro ATX case so we're going to take advantage of it being a little bit smaller. Since this is a back to school build I wanted it to be somewhat portable so you could take it with you. It's got a clear plexi side window so you can take a look at your system after you put it together and also some decent cable managed options. So this is a perfectly adequate choice but of course if you find another case in that range that's micro ATX and you like the look of it better or the reviews better by all means feel free to swap that out. Finally, for a power supply, I wanted a 550 watt power supply. I wanted it to be 80 plus bronze rated. And then of course, I wanted it to be somewhat aesthetically okay looking. Uh, this power supply is not modular, so all of the cables come pre-connected, but that's okay to deal with. I just wanted to make sure that they were all black. Of course, if you can find another power supply that uh, suits you better, like a modular one, uh, provides some convenience or going with a better uh, efficiency rating like 80 plus gold, again, feel free to swap that in. Power supplies are pretty swappable as long as it's ATX. And those are all the parts for my $450 back to school gaming PC. Bear in mind here again, lots of potential upgrades here. You're gonna wanna add another hard drive, for example. So you might wanna budget 40 bucks for that if you don't have one around that you could use. Of course, you're gonna want Windows to install in there. So there are some more expenses, but you also have the upgrade potential of going with a 16 gig kit instead of a two by four gig kit, or of course, adding a graphics card in the future, adding more storage. But that's really where the fun of building your own computer comes from, is all of the modularity upgrades you can do in the future. Let's move on though. So my next build is uh, more on the expensive side. Total price here is $2,356.49 as of today, including a mail-in rebate. And this is the fastest gaming PC that you could possibly build 
For right now, anytime I use an absolute like fastest, I have to remind you guys my, my mantra, which is never speak in absolutes. And for that, I need to point out, I'm not going all out, throw as much money at the build as possible. This is still a build I find somewhat sensible, and I would say if you want some of the core components here, this is kind of what I would guide you towards. We have the highest end Intel mainstream processor, that's the 8700K, which is a six core, 12 thread processor, and it's got the best instructions per clock. And that's gonna correlate to the best gaming performance. Right now, it's even better than the uh, Intel high-end desktop stuff that they have on X299. Again, for right now, because we're expecting an Intel 9000 series CPU launch, maybe very soon, we're not really sure. So for anyone investing in this, bear in mind, you're probably gonna have uh, faster Intel processors coming out very soon. But the second part of this, of course, is that Nvidia has announced and will be launching theoretically in about 11 days, their GTX, I'm sorry, their RTX series, their RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti are supposed to ship out on the 20th of this month and they're already available for sale and pre-order in a lot of different places. Now I wanna point out and reiterate, I do not recommend pre-ordering the RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti or the 2070 once that's available. You should wait until there's inter independent reviews of these cards before you go and you drop your money. That said, there are people who are like, I want to build the best gaming computer I can build right now. So this is my answer for people who would want to do that with what's available or available very soon. And the total price of $23 or $2,400 is of course very expensive, but it's not like absolutely insane expensive when it comes to high-end gaming PC. So let's run down these parts. Apart from that 8700K, I paired it with a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler from Cooler Master. Now there are other air cooling options that are out there, but if you're gonna get this CPU and you're going for the fastest gaming performance, you're probably gonna want to overclock it. And a 240 millimeter all-in-one is a good choice for that. I've used this one before, it's nice and quiet, it gets the job done, and wow, you can get it for as cheap as $60. Although, I did find out that this Amazon link is broken. On Amazon, if you go directly and look up the Master Liquid Lite 240, you can get the white LED one for $52. Um, but we're, we're kind of splitting hairs when it comes to the overall price of this system. Uh, any 240 millimeter all-in-one will do you just fine, uh, but if you can get those for $70, I think it's a good choice. For our motherboard, I usually go in the $150 to $200 range for mainstream Intel motherboards, and I've chosen the Z370 Aorus Gaming 5, which I just found has a nice set of features. Uh, four dim slots, of course. It's got some lighting on it, which you might find appealing or not. That's entirely up to your aesthetic decision, but let's talk functionality. It's got that USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel connector as well as the slightly older USB 3.0 connector there. It has good lighting options uh, apart from the LEDs built into the motherboard it has RGBW header uh, up there which is nice to have if you like having white options in the RGB LEDs too and it's also got the 5 volt uh, addressable header there too so either way you will have support for your RGB strips. It's got very solid power delivery for overclocking and it's got a couple PCI Express slots if you do decide to go with a two-way configuration in the future. More LED headers down at the bottom. Oh, and look, a, a, a debug LED. I like having that for your motherboards. That's just a nice feature there too. Oh, and did I mention three M.2 slots? One, two, and three. You probably don't need more than two. In fact, if you go with more than two, you're probably gonna run into some potential conflicts with SATA ports and, and otherwise, but it's better to have it there than not, I would say, and for $170, that's a good motherboard. Running down the rest of the parts on the list, we have a 16 gig memory kit, DDR4 3200. Uh, fast memory isn't quite as important with Intel as it is with AMD, but fast memory is still good nonetheless, and for about $150, you can get this set. I focus purely on gaming performance here, so of course you could uh, upgrade to a 32 gig kit that would be completely reasonable for this system, uh, but 16 gigs is all you really need if you're not concerned about, say, gaming and streaming at the same time. If you are gonna stream at the same time, uh, upgrade that memory, that would be a good choice. For storage, I chose an M.2 drive because we want very fast load times for our games uh, if, if you wanna install Steam on this. A 500 gig main operating system drive in the 960 Evo, which has really fast read and write speeds. It's a really good NVMe drive and it's actually come down in price. This is one of the first time I've recommended one of these for like a somewhat normal system for about $155. That's a good price for the 500 gig 960 Evo. I was also looking at the Western Digital Black M.2 NVMe drive, but this one has a bit better performance and it was about the same price. Not just the 500 gig 960 Evo, but another one terabyte-ish 
data drive, and it's also about $150. Of course, you could add a mechanical drive instead of this if you wanted to save a little bit of money, you know, two or four or six terabyte mechanical drive would be a perfectly adequate solution here. But hey, if we wanna have lots of games installed on the system that we can load at a moment's notice, uh, we want our Steam drive to be on an SSD and not a mechanical drive. So again, here I've just used the PC part picker search options to look for an SSD that is in the one terabyte range and sort by price. And again, just like I recommended with the first build, just reality check here and choose one that suits your needs that's not terribly overpriced that is actually from a brand you've heard of. And then there is the graphics card, the RTX 2080 Ti. And this again is only on pre-order, so uh, currently the cheapest one I could find that you could order right now was $1,150 from EVGA. These are supposed to sell for as little as $1,000, but I'm not gonna pretend that they're available for that much until I can point you guys to somewhere where you could actually order it for that much. So this is the one I chose just based on what was available on PC Part Picker. You can actually pre-order it uh, from B&H, although expected availability is October 22nd. It's a month late, it's supposed to actually be available on September 22nd, but we'll see how shipments go when, the, when it comes to the early sales. You can buy this directly from the EVGA website or pre-order. Oh no, you can just auto notify right now. Although it's 50 bucks more expensive there for some reason compared to BNH. Uh, but anyway, so you have options for ordering right now, but don't, don't order any of these 2080 or 2080 TIs until you actually get some reviews from me and hopefully some other people too. Rounding things out with the case and the power supply, I just chose a about $100 case that I know is a good one. Uh, there's the pure base and there's the silent base, both from Be Quiet that you can find in this range. I just chose the all black version. You can get the one with the orange accents that would match with the motherboard a little bit, I suppose. Uh, but I like these because they come with nice Be Quiet uh, fans that are very quiet. Um, it's a solid all around case, but if you have a case that you prefer, um, by all means, swap it in as long as it's ATX. Uh, it should work just fine. Uh, and then of course power supply. Here, since it's a higher end system, I went with a 650 watt power supply. If you are ever considering an SLI configuration, uh, especially for 2080s or 2080Ti's, I'd recommend something more like an 850 watt power supply. But 650 watt, 80 plus gold, and then from a good brand like EVGA, and then I opted for a fully modular version here, and uh, and, and of course the 80 plus gold, a little bit more efficient there. So uh, 80 bucks for that, and you can even get it for down to $60 if you opt for that mail-in rebate. Um, of course, you gotta remember to fill up the forms and send it in after you order it. But guys, that pretty much wraps it up for my monthly builds video for September 2018. I'm actually gonna build one of these systems. Probably gonna do that 2080 Ti version because I think I might be getting my hands on one of those, but um, that all remains to be seen in the future. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this though, and links to the builds lists, as well as all the individual parts are down in the description, as well as links to my earlier videos on how to build systems and how to set up systems and all sorts of other helpful contents that I have on my channel, which hopefully helps you guys out. Uh, that's all for this one though, guys. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.